Hello world, except you're living under a rock, you'd have heard of Apple's new device. It's called the Apple Vision Pro. It's a mixed reality headset which Apple says will take the industry by storm and take computing by storm. Well, let's talk about it. Welcome to the show, I'm G Vader. Let's get to it. So, what is this device? What's all the fuss about this Apple Vision Pro? It's a mixed reality headset. And what makes it different from other headsets? We've had headsets in the past. We've had the Oculus Rift. We've had uh, Google bring out a VR headset. Speaking of Google, I actually was one of those that bought this headset when it came out, but it's now, it's literally a paperweight at this point. And that just goes to show you how tough it is to get into this space. Google was in this space early. They came out with the Google Glass and that didn't do so well. Uh, so what makes this different from those? For one, from what we saw in the presentation, you can be fully immersed in VR or you could partially be aware of your surroundings through uh, AR, that's augmented reality. And that's one of the things that I like about it in terms of the pluses. They've showed us how you can actually use it for uh, immersive experiences again to enjoy content which I feel most people will be using it for if they actually get it it's to be in an, in an immersive experience where you have a 3d cinema around you you're visually in the, the a movie you're watching or content you're enjoying but for people like me who would want to do some more productive things than just consuming content how does this help us so one of the things that Apple talked about was that you could use it for multiple monitors. So you could actually get some work done where you put on the headset and then you have your monitors showing on it. And if you have a Mac, you can literally transfer your Mac screen onto one of those VR screens and then you can use it. And, and why I like the VR element is that you can be aware of your surroundings. So you can actually see what's going on while you're working and that's Apple has done a good job of presenting that anyway and the ads that they showed it looks really really good and uh, the build looks good when they showed the build and everything and I'm confident in the build because Apple have been consistent fairly consistent over over time I still have my uh, iPad the very first gener generation iPad and it's still solid it doesn't really work, work well now but it's still solid so that just goes to show you about the build quality so I'm confident about the build quality I don't have a problem with that but again it's the first iteration of this device so you expect Apple not to put in their all <laughs> which they are prone to do and one of the examples of this is with the battery pack so uh, the device comes with an internal battery that lasts for two hours. So if it's off the, the lead, it goes for two hours. But if you leave, keep it plugged in, it goes on for as long as you want. But then if you want to use it outside of being plugged in, I want to extend the usage for more than two hours. You have to have a battery pack that plugs into the headset and then you put it in your pocket or whatever. But again, that's neither here or there but I feel that future iterations would have better uh, storage capacity for batteries. So the pros for me in this device is being able to work on multiple monitors and not having uh, a, a control stick. This device I showed just now, the, the, Google, uh, uh, the Google headset that's no longer in use, comes with a remote control. So most of the devices that you have on the market now have something similar to this, so like a wand, and then it just simulates a virtual a wand in a virtual reality space as well that you can use to select and uh, click on stuff and just use for a basic input device. But but with this Apple uh, headset, you use your fingers and your eyes, which is really, really cool. I would love to see how that plays out in real life. They say you can scroll, you can pinch in the air and scroll, and then you can move things around and so on and so forth. And then you use the pupils of your eyes. And one of the things when they mentioned that was like, okay, for people like me that wear glasses, how's that gonna work? Apple has come up with uh, a system where for people that wear glasses or have medicated lenses, you have to go in and then they would design some lenses on the device for you so it works well. So that is a plus. Uh, let's come to the parts that are gonna be hard to swallow. And the first thing that everyone says, okay, it's a great device, how much does it cost? Is it something I can afford? And I can tell you right now, it's the price of a small car. If you're in, a, if you're in a, a, an emerging economy, if you're in Nigeria or other countries, it's, it's, it's pretty expensive. So it goes for $3,500. In the UK where I'm at now, it's, that, that should be around three 3,000 uh, pounds. 
So that's pretty expensive, but I anticipate Apple will have a payment plan as they always do. So it's literally like buying two MacBook Pros for, for crying out loud. So if you have a MacBook Pro plan that you're paying over two years, just think of having a four year plan just to pay for, for the headset, but is it worth it? So again, this is where you would have to say, okay, what's valuable to you and is it worth your time? I would say it's a niche product for now. It's a niche product and it will be early adopters, tech enthusiasts and developers that would want to get this device and see what they can make of it, especially the developers because there's so much opportunity. I feel there's so much opportunity that can be explored and uh, that's why Apple has released it now, six, six months ahead of uh, when it will come to market so developers can go in, create apps and do all sorts of amazing things for it. Uh, similar to when the iPhone came out, Apple is again hoping that the apps will be the driving force for the success of this device. Remember when the first iPhone came out, it was just like, okay, how does this, what's different about this than an iPod? Okay, you can make calls, so what? But then. Apple worked with developers, they came up with the app store and then it all blew up from there. If you ask me, hey, Vader, will you get this? I would say, no, I'll wait for the second or third iteration. And I anticipate something interesting gonna happen. Apple usually gets into a space and they might get in late. You think they're getting in late, but when they get in, they usually dominate. And I see them dominating this space. Um, you have uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook doing uh, talking about the metaverse and that's going nowhere. But Apple has come in and from the whole presentation, it's just like, wow, this is how the metaverse should be. <laughs> it is what we actually anticipated and Apple has done a, a good job of marketing that to the audience. I see this picking up eventually, but not at the moment. And I anticipate that other companies would have imitations. So I anticipate Samsung, Google, and other companies working on, uh, for lack of a better term, poor man's Apple Vision Pro for the masses that's cheap. Apple has a way of making you want something without you knowing that you want it. So let's see how, how this pans out. All in all, I would say it's a positive move because Apple has now moved the needle to another level and all tech companies will want to do something around this fair of mixed reality where you can successfully combine virtual reality and augmented reality. One disadvantage that everyone has been pointing out and I am also concerned about is this isolation issue that comes with being in an immersive environment for periods of time. Um, but that's why Apple has focused on the mixed reality aspect where they say, okay, if you're using the if you're wearing the headset there's a display in front that mimics your face your eyes so if someone comes close to you while you're wearing the the, the, the set your eyes pop out and they can see your face and then you can see them in whatever you're doing there's just they just pop up like ghosts in your view so they try and mitigate that element of okay not being fully immersed and not knowing what's happening and so on and so forth but again it's something about balance one of the issue that concerns me is if you've used headsets before uh, vr headsets it's for me i get dizzy after prolonged use so if i use it for an hour or so when i was using this headset for an hour plus uh, I, I start getting nauseated it'll be interesting to see how this device mitigates those things because that's a serious cause for concern for people uh not everyone uh, wants to be in that environment for long, especially if Apple is pushing the narrative that, okay, you can use it for work, it will replace the multiple uh, monitors that you have. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple mitigates this and how uh, various versions of this device will make things better for carrying, for using, making it even lighter. I anticipate a point where it will come like these glasses at some point, that's maybe 10, 20 years down the line, but that is my take. All in all, I would say it's a good move by Apple. It's, will it pay off in the long run? Time will tell. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about the new Apple Vision Pro. Uh, until next time, be good.